Hello everyone, my name is Kaylee and welcome to the JKL Podcast, where today we will be talking about The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. If you have never heard of The Joy Luck Club, The Joy Luck Club is a novel that is centered around four mothers with harsh past immigrating to the United States in order to achieve the American dream for their children. With this goal in mind, it has placed many expectations that imprison their children and them not being able to take control over their life. This imprisonment leads to the children experiencing many difficulties in their self-expression and identity as they feel as if they cannot choose their own destiny. This is a common occurrence in many Asian American students today as they may feel pressure from their parents to take AP courses and participate in many extracurricular activities and clubs that they may not have any interest in. With this overwhelming amount of pressure on top of stress from school and other outside factors, it can be difficult for one to find time in their daily lives to dive deep into understanding who they really are as a person. Today in this podcast, we have Lawrence telling us his own experiences with this difficulty. Hi everyone, I'm Lawrence. From the moment I entered kindergarten, my family had always set a goal for me to reach, a line I had to cross, be it grades or some other form of expressing talent, like an instrument. My parents spent much time, effort, and money on gifted and talented programs, piano lessons, and tutorial, tutoring lessons to make sure I was always A grade. Both of my parents came from a childhood of struggle and hard work, born to families of farmers. They climbed themselves out of the brink of poverty through hard work. They assumed just because I was their child that I would turn out to be just as strong as them. How could they have known that I ended up being quite average? Many of these issues can be found in the Joy Luck Club, with June clearly asserting her right to fall short of expectations and how she could only be herself, despite her mother's efforts for her to become a prodigy at piano. I think I can relate to many high school students when I say, I'm going to follow my own expectations, not someone else's. And that's the theme June is following here. As time went on, my parents didn't exactly relax their expectations. They sort of just accepted that I wasn't as great as they thought. The exact thing can be seen in June's mother after stating how June was just not trying and that she was neither angry nor sad. She said it as if to announce a fact. I'm sure many parents have experienced this sort of burnout before sort of giving up on higher expectations for their children and just accepting who they are. Some children will like nothing other than their parents just accepting their identity, while others may feel a bit uncomfortable at their parents just giving up hope so easily. Me, I'm more of the latter. Thank you for the insight, Lawrence. Growing up, my parents also forced me to play the piano and earn straight A's in high school. If I did not earn straight A's, I would seriously be grounded for like a month. Not only is there the pressure from parents that can contribute to Asian American students not being able to find their own identity, there is also the struggle of balancing their culture between their American side as well as their Asian background and heritage. From my own experience, it is hard to understand certain Vietnamese culture as American culture sometimes likes to stereotype Asians, but in a more negative limelight. The American culture has their own ideology about typical Asian behavior, such as maybe Asians are terrible drivers, that would make an Asian American student feel embarrassed about their heritage. For example, in the Joy Luck Club, Lena felt embarrassed because of her own mother's behavior in grocery stores, as she was afraid that people would call her mother and herself quote unquote crazy. Here is Jade and her views about this issue. Hi everyone, I'm Jade, and I definitely agree that there is institutionalized racism in America. For Asian Americans, I feel as though we're obligated to meet the standards and conform to what Western society deems as appropriate. For example, a lot of my Asian friends and I have experienced racist encounters both in person and online during the first few months of the pandemic. We were treated at a lower level just because others thought it was acceptable to blame Asian Americans for COVID. Fast forward seven to eight months later and you see K-pop and anime becoming a trend all of a sudden and we are no longer considered bad eaters. Likewise, this ties into how Lena wouldn't have felt embarrassed at the grocery store if Western culture was less discriminative and more accepting to people of color and their cultural backgrounds. Similarly, Asian Americans have also been confined to stereotypes placed by other Asian Americans, which I find interesting because why would you want to discriminate your own race? The terms whitewash and banana describe a person who exhibits more westernized traits than others of their race and has affected how people view themselves. 
And many of these whitewashed Asians have grown up in predominantly white neighborhoods, which doesn't necessarily mean they want to distance themselves from their culture, but haven't learned and connected to their culture as much as others have. This is significant to high schoolers since it's important for younger generations to recognize this issue in order to bring change to society and make everyone feel more inclusive. Thank you so much for the input, Jade. It sucks that in today's society, people are still expected to conform to certain schemas that society places on individuals. Well, that's all we have time for today, folks. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, and we'll catch you next time on the JKL Podcast.